at the station in Houston on Space to Ground 2. Anne, are you ready for the event? I am ready for the event. And United States Army, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Hey, Space Control, this is Secretary Driscoll. How are you? Secretary Driscoll, it's an honor to talk to you. I have you loud and clear. We're doing great up here on the International Space Station. It's nice to meet you. Sir, it is very nice to meet you as well. Uh, thank you to your for your service to the Army and for all of our soldiers out there celebrating our 250th birthday of our incredible United States Army. Thank you for your service. So, uh, uh, Colonel, when I took this job, one of the things everybody told me is you will just not believe the number of things that the U.S. Army and its soldiers do. And nearly every day I have been surprised at something new, but you have absolutely taken the cake for having the coolest and mo most unique job of any soldier uh, that I've talked to so far. Well, sir, I am proud to represent the Army, which is really an army of innovators, leaders, and problem solvers. Uh, our legacy of problem solving, innovation, development, contributions to technology and society, it goes, it goes way back to our very roots. Uh, the roots of the Army, which, as you know, is one year older than our country, not by coincidence. Uh, very proud of the Army's uh, development of aviation from the early 1900s medicines and technologies throughout this past century and now operations in the space domain as well it's uh, it's an incredible it's incredible service to be from and uh we do have army astronauts in case people didn't know so i have colonel dave butler with me uh he is one of our finest and so what we were hoping to do is just ask you a couple of questions about your background how you ended up in space what you learned in the army along the way that helped you get there um so would you mind kind of kicking off with a little bit of your background Yes, sir. Um, well, I grew up in Spokane, Washington, and when I was 18, I uh, went to the United States Military Academy for college. Uh, best decision I've ever made. Uh, graduated from West Point in 2002, and then as a Marshall Scholar, I moved to England for two and a half years of grad school. I completed two master's degrees while in grad school. My main academic fo focus has been aerospace engineering. I also did a degree in international relations, international security. Uh, then came back and went to flight school, uh, where I learned to fly the OH-58 Delta Kiowa Warrior, the Army's uh, premier reconnaissance aircraft, and uh, served as a scout pilot, uh, platoon leader, troop commander uh, for the following uh, handful of years. And then about uh, in about 2012, I was selected for the United States Naval Test Pilot School. That's where we send our Army uh, officers to be trained as experimental test pilots. I was fortunate enough to uh, to go do that. I flew, got to fly over 20 aircraft and learn how to do test and evaluation on aircraft and acquisition. Shortly thereafter, I was picked up as a NASA astronaut in 2013, um, and I'm currently on my second flight up to the International Space Station. My first flight, I flew on the Russian Soyuz spacecraft and did a six-month mission in 2018 and 2019. And uh, this time I'm the commander of the SpaceX Crew Dragon uh, uh, capsule. And we are also here on the International Space Station for about six months. And uh, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I completed uh, another master's degree in strategic studies at the United States Army War College. Hey, that's not bad. I guess you have a lot of time to study up there. I don't know. Uh, we talked to a couple of your pilot buddies leading up to this. They said you were quite a uh, Kiowa pilot. Must be a big change for you. I'm glad they're saying nice things. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot of similarities between being a scout pilot and being an astronaut. You know, we're we're unafraid. We're out front, and uh, we're we're checking out the lay of the land uh, so that people can come up behind us. So, for any of our soldiers um, who are are new to the service or are kind of mid career and are thinking about what can I do in the army that that may be different from being in my line unit. What was your process like as you kind of, um, I would say, pushed to the outer extreme of what you were able to do in the Army? Did you find your chain of command supportive and all the training you had? Did it Was it applicable? 
Yes, sir. That's a, that's a great question. I, I did end up in kind of a weird place, but I had a very normal career, uh, Army career up to that point. The thing is, when we're looking for astronauts, we're looking for the basics of what Army soldiers provide, and that is the ability to work in a complex operational environment, work on a team, provide leadership and clarity, get guidance from the outside and accomplish a mission with reduced resources. Those skill sets of every single Army soldier are absolutely what make Army astronauts a, an asset to NASA. Uh, I found that I had a lot of support on my chain of command. I have incredible mentors within the Army uh, that I still keep in contact with, some of whom came to, down to Florida and watched my launch. Uh, so one piece of advice I would give, though, is that Army service is it's too important to use as a stepping stone. At every point in my career, I led soldiers. I had responsibility to the unit. I had responsibility to the country to provide a service. And that was the most important thing that I was doing at the time. And so no matter where you want to get, the most important thing that you're doing is the job that you have right now. And you know, we all know that your path in the Army is not always of your choosing. You know, If I had laid out my, the map of where the jobs that I wanted to do, it would not look like the jobs that I ended up doing. And I was told as a young officer, listen, you're gonna get jobs that are not the ones that you want. And what you need to do is the absolute best job. You're gonna take something from every job that you have and you're gonna provide something to every job that you have. And those, th that advice was absolutely spot on. And that's what I would tell everybody is, do the job that you're doing right now with your whole heart into it because soldiers are depending on you. The organization is depending on you. But then you also have to think five, seven years out, talk to your branch managers, you know, hop on, hop on your army email and shoot us a note. If you're looking at going in a different direction there, everybody is accessible to you and everybody wants to send the elevator back down and help our soldiers along. So one of the things that I found was just an incredible desire by senior military f folks that came before me to show me the path and to reach out. And, and even just recently, you know, speaking with a few general officers, I had one who I had never met and I asked him for mentorship and he said, I am always available to you. That is, that is what I got from my army leaders and it's absolutely why I'm here right now. Yeah, that's great. That's actually the same exact advice that General George gives to whatever level. Do the job that you're in now and, and do the best, absolute best you can. Soldier to soldier, just gonna ask a couple soldier questions. How's it chow? <laughs> And do you get any get any time to do PT? You get any time to work out? And then I have to add one. I think your birthday was a couple of days ago. How do you celebrate a birthday in space? So three questions. Uh, I love those questions. Um, soldiers always want to know about chow and workouts. So first of all, for workouts, we do work out. In fact, this is like the best environment for working out because it is on our timeline every single day. We have a timeline that is given to us by mission control and two and a half hours of that every day is working out. Now we call it countermeasures and it is very true. It is a countermeasure because actually what we're doing is combating bone loss and muscle loss. But for somebody like me that grew up doing PT in the morning in the, in the military and you know, is sometimes some of the jobs you get into the military that PT time's not carved out for you and it's really hard to find that time, but it's so important. It is a luxury uh, to have that workout time built in for us. Now you asked about food and you would think that, the, that space must be the farthest thing from a field exercise that you can possibly get. So at least she's not eating MREs, right? Wrong. <laughs> Half of our food is indeed gonna look very familiar to a lot of people out there. <laughs> Which one is that one? We, What's in there? I've even got my tube of cheddar cheese. Uh, so I've got a meatloaf here and I've got a cheddar cheese. And I would say, you know, on the space station, we don't have jalapeno cheddar cheese. So if you're out doing an army field exercise right now and you have jalapeno cheddar cheese, just know that an astronaut is jealous of you. <laughs> That's great. And, th and then birthday, what did you do for your birthday? Well, funny enough, where you see me standing right now is where we typically do our public outreach events from space station. And on my birthday, I thought it was gonna be pretty low key. My Japanese commander, Takuyo Onishi, uh, told us that he had a public affairs event with his home agency, JAXA, and that he asked if his crewmates could join him. I didn't think anything of this. In fact, I was actually thinking, okay, I need to get the, make sure I know my talking points. I need to make sure that I'm ready to engage with JAXA and understand what, the questions that they might ask. 
And the, the camera came on and I expected it to be an interview with, uh, with our commander. And instead I had family and friends down there in mission control singing happy birthday to me. Um, so I stood right here where you see me or floated, I guess. I'm not really standing. Uh, and in, in shock as people sang happy birthday. So it was incredibly special. That's amazing. First birthday out in space. It sounds like maybe you had a couple. I've had two birthdays in space and there's a fun fact. This is a, this is a law up here. There are birthdays do not count in space. So I've gotten to shave a couple of years off of my age. That's amazing. And so I, I guess a, a one kind of wrap up question is, as, as you think of the Army's 250th birthday, um, we're, we're so excited to tell the stories of soldiers and um, what they've done since kind of uh, pre-American Revolution all the way to recently helping with forest fires and flooding, and they're all over the world. Um, they're up in space. I guess if you were going to pass a message to the force, what would that uh, message be? Yeah, to the Army soldiers, I would say that my proudest accomplishment is getting to serve alongside uh, the soldiers of our United States Army. Every single Army soldier, civilian, contractor, and family member is vital to the success of our nation, and your service matters. It matters to the American people, and it matters to me personally, and it matters to people all around the world. The way that we execute our mission and we uphold our values, we represent the best of character uh, for the country. Um, it is a vital mission. It's a no-fail mission. It's no coincidence that our army is one year older than our nation. We protect and we provide freedom. That is also a no-fail mission. So as we celebrate 250 years of service, we, always, we also want to look back at the legacy of the soldiers and the folks that came before us and the sacrifices that were made so that we may enjoy the freedoms that we have today. So my biggest message uh, to the army today is thank you, thank you. The nation and the world relies on us now more than ever. Well, we just wanna say on behalf of General George uh, and me and Colonel Butler, we are incredibly proud of you. Uh, we're so excited to continue to watch you from afar and watch all the cool things you're doing. Uh, and when you get back down on land, come visit us in the Pentagon. Thank you, amazing work. Thank you, amazing work. Thank you. Thank, it's very, very special to be able to, uh, to talk to you today. Uh, thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, and as an Army astronaut, I am so proud to represent the legacy of exploration and discovery that, uh, that exemplifies our Army. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Station copies, and thank you very much, all participants. We're now resuming operational audio communications.